So we're going to talk today about Untangle Firewall. And a lot of people have uh, asked me, because I've done so many firewall reviews, and you know I'm obviously a big advocate of PFSense because I really like open source firewalls, but there are times when you need something that does full web filtering, is turnkey, is easy to use, is a good solution. And I've looked at a handful of them, and I immediately got agitated with them, and then Untangle came up, and I've talked to a handful of my tech friends who have deployed a lot of these. Uh, my one friend had commented he's deployed almost, I think he said a thousand of them overall over the years. He's been using it for a long time. So I've got a lot of uh, people, a lot of feedback from more than one of my well-respected tech friends who say, yes, this is a very solid product. So we did some testing with it, and I absolutely agree with them. This was a really good product. Now, first, because someone's always going to ask, well, what about, how does it compare to, and this is a little bit difficult. I wish I had all the time in the world to spend digging into every single firewall and do a head-to-head -head firewall video. Uh, if anyone wants to throw enough money at me, more than happy to do it. Um, but obviously, that takes a lot to really dive deep into a firewall. Now, the thing I will cover is, first, it's not free. It's not an open source firewall solution. And we're going to talk about pricing real quick, because that's where a lot of people may get turned off, that they're always looking for the ultimate free solution. Sorry, this isn't free. Good well filtering takes a good security team, a good knock team to understand uh, the threats on the web, to compile the resources together, and to deliver that to a firewall as a feed so your threat management stays up to date and relevant. Uh, this is why I'm reviewing this firewall, because it does that. It does that at a reasonable price. And we're going to talk about price real quick here in a different way. So right at the top of the Untangle website, we have a buy button. And then we have pricing. This is amazing. If only other companies like Fortinet with their Fortycare, uh, contact support, call us, Sophos, Get pricing, get a quote. Cisco Meraki, uh, get a quote after you check some boxes and get an idea of their pricing, but don't really tell you. Yeah, we're still back here. We, we don't know. All these companies think they're hiding pricing. I don't understand this. Uh, this is something that drives me nuts. Just tell me the price of the thing without having to talk to a person, fill out a form, and get on your mailing list. Literally, I'm right here on Tingle's website, and we can figure out our pricing model. Now, I kind of like their pricing model. And this is an important distinction I want to get clear. They have a firewall that is free, but the add-on features cost money. You get a 14-day trial for full-blown all the features, the web filtering, the content filtering, the threat management, and the feeds that come with it. But this is my favorite part. If you choose not to renew your license because you bought one previously or you let your 14-day trial expire, the firewall doesn't turn off. It is not like Cisco Meraki where it turns into a pumpkin at midnight when you didn't pay the license and it keeps functioning without those extra feeds. So you really do get a good firewall solution that if you decide you don't need those extra features, you can not have to rip it out. You can keep it in place. This is just a better business model to me going, hey, these things cost money. These are things are team works on. Uh, keeping this firewall up to date is a lot of work for these threat management. So yes, uh, that does cost money. Now, what's even better is the bright fact that I don't have to talk to anyone to get pricing, and I can go here and choose how many licensed devices, not users. I made the mistake of saying that. Uh, when I, I did talk to the sales rep people, which are really nice. Uh, they're super easy people to talk to. Uh, they actually have a really, we're working on becoming a partner because we want to start reselling uh, these Untangles as some solutions to clients that need that extra layer of protection with the UTM. And we've seen them deployed before. We've seen them um, where clients have bought them themselves. And that's also another thing where we usually work with a lot of other IT companies on special projects and we've seen Untangle at the head end and they go, this thing works great. They, they really seem to like it as well. Their device licensing, you figure out this. If you have some weird custom solution, you can talk to a sales rep and work things out with them uh, through partner networks and distributor networks. But if you just want to buy it direct and you have a small office uh, or even a 1,000-person office, they have pricing on here, and it's pretty cl clear. The cool thing is this is the NG Firewall Complete. I won't get into some of the other deals, but they do have a big discount for nonprofits and uh, public sector. But the home one for home users, this is really a great deal for home users who go, you know what, I really want a turnkey, easy system to do some filtering, and I don't want to have to pay a whole ton of money. Well, you know, 50 bucks a year is a great deal for home users who are looking for a firewall that's intuitive, easy to use, and will filter out things that you may not want your kids getting to. 
by the way, kids are really smart and they're going to figure out ways around the firewall. Um, but this is a layer, at least a extra barrier you put some effort into trying to stop them from getting online. It all depends how tech savvy your kids are and how tech savvy you are. So I just want to cover the pricing, get it out of the way, because a lot of people are going to ask about this. It's nice and clear and online, unlike these other companies that call for quote, call for quote, call for quote. That drives me crazy. So let's roll back all the way to how do you download it? How do you get it? Well, pretty easy. Uh, ISO CD image download, uh, VMware appliance. So they do support it running in a virtual machine. I have now run it at my house for a little while on a physical hardware box. I've run it on a virtual machine here as a test and both of them work perfectly fine. I didn't run any issues with uh, doing the demos with this. I'm not gonna take you through the whole installer, but I'll tell you the installer is fairly straightforward and uh, nothing exciting about it. it was actually really easy to install it walks you through and i got this actually zoomed in too far uh it walks you through like a standard install that you've seen for most linux distributions next in the extra way through it with a graphical installer lets you use a mouse made it easy to install and actually it won't let me rescale this down uh but i can just press enter most of the times and it will just go through and set this firewall up a minimum two network cards just does support more but like i said the installer I had no problems installing it both on hardware or in a virtual machine. I didn't actually download their OVA file, um, but that would work fine as well, I'm sure. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and cancel it. Now I'm bringing you here to my firewall demo of what it looks like installed because normally the console's not interesting. Their console's very interesting. Let me uh, move this over here for you. So if you plug in to the console itself, this is actually what you see on there. A firewall with a GUI. That's strange, because most firewalls are not managed with a GUI, they're managed with a web interface. Well, so is this one. Uh, you have recovery utilities, you have a few other options on there, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but you can actually just, it launches a web browser to manage the firewall inside the GUI. So you can actually plug in if you built this on a, a commodity hardware, which of course commodity hardware is supported. And I didn't cover in the beginning, but yes, they have appliances they sell. So this is either you load it yourself or you can buy one of their pre-configured hardware appliances uh, to run this on. So either way you want to run this is fine. But the fact that it has a graphical interface that lets you do this from the firewall is actually pretty neat. Um, I've not seen that before, so I thought that was kind of novel, and maybe someone's gonna say, but Tom, haven't you seen so-and-so? Yeah, I'm sure there's other companies doing it, but this one's really nice. Uh, so we can close the web browser. We can shut down reboot. I uh, have recovery utilities, get to the terminal, which I think prompts you with a warning. This is for advanced people who know how to terminal. Um, nice. Uh, do you want to run the recovery? We're going to say no, but it does have cool recovery, reboot services. Uh, but the web interface inside of here looks the same as it does when you log in. So let's start digging into the web interface a little bit. And we're going to do it a little different here. So Untangle being targeted at the commercial market, we're going to go ahead and sign in here. Now I'm going to block out some IP addresses on here uh, for my office and things like that. But what you're seeing is the dashboard so you can see all of your appliances in one dashboard we have only two registered here because we just set this up and uh, this dashboard comes with your account and what this allows you to do if you're an MSP like we are you can deploy these and then have them all in one dashboard so you can get an idea of what's going on with them and then from here we can manage them now what happens is when you're setting up on Tangle at Ask if you have a registered on Tangle account you can either create one or sign into yours each one of these that you sign into um, you, this all can be blocked if you don't don't want any remote access to your Untangle via this dashboard, you can shut all this off really easily. Um, you actually implicitly have to turn it on um, because by signing into your account. If you don't sign into your account, yes, you can keep using Untangle, but you're not going to be able to license it because the licensing works through this. But you can still license it through this and still block access to the dashboard if you so wanted to. The nice thing is this dashboard means I don't have to open up any ports for management, it keeps a secure proxy connection via the Untangled dashboard. So uh, we've looked at this, how it works. It's really clever. It's a really nice uh, system. So let's actually get into managing Untangle. So I've zoomed in specifically to the one running at my house. It's got some appliance warnings because there's only two days left of my trial. We've been using this at home because I wanted to gather a lot of stats on it. Um, it's too much work to switch our entire work environment over to this. So like I said, I just did some testing at home so I can kind of get an idea of what works, what blocks and things like that which they have all these reporting and tools and may one day I'll get in more into the dashboard depending on the interest level in this video. Uh, but I will show you now Untangle itself and how the reporting looks. So we click remote access 
And remote access wants the firewall password, not my Untangle uh, password again. So I have admin and a password set. And now via proxy magic from Untangle, I'm into that particular firewall logged in directly to the one at my house right now. And because proxy it takes a second to load all the details and get the data pulled, and this is the dashboard for Untangle. And you can see we use the Chromecast a whole lot, which is not surprising for home. Uh, games uh, my kids play make up a uh, big part of it. But it's one thing I'll say is right off the rip, their reporting is nice, it's easy, uh, it makes chasing things down pretty simple. It also makes adding conditions easy. And what I mean by conditions are you can filter this dashboard out to be down to any specific service or IP address which makes it really easy when you're doing things like, okay, what's causing the problem or what's what's using all this data? Uh, do you want a host name equals Chromecast? Say yes. It's gonna take a second. And now it starts filtering this. And what these are is adding conditions up here on the reporting menu. So th this is kind of neat the way it sees this. Now, the real magic is in the apps. This is the what you get to pay for. And once these expire, I lose access, but the firewall is not going to, like I said, break at my house, only I'll lose certain features. So the application control, SSL inspector, uh, bandwidth control, and virus blocker and web filters. Those are the things that are paid for. Also uh, WAN failover, WAN balancer, directory connector, because this does integrate with Active Directory, uh, policy manager, where you can write really specific policies um, on things. I'm not gonna get too much into that, but it's kind of neat. Um, branding is kind of cool because you can do some custom logo and branding. I believe if you buy the home version, I don't know that that's a feature uh, with the home version, but I don't think home users care. Uh, and this is where we're going to dig into a little bit more about the way this firewall works. So all these applications, you go here and you say install apps and you just choose which things. If you want web caching, we just go click here. And we're going to do it right now on the spot live here and it's downloading and enabling the web caching feature at my house with that one click. It's now installed. Click on apps. All right, now that we have the web cache installed, let's go ahead and click on the web cache and any app. And then I'll have the same common interface. We can go ahead and click enable. I understand the risk, clear the cache. Uh, if it's got there. So clearing the cache requires restarting the caching engine, web will be disrupted. But it's pretty cool. Um, these apps all have these really simple interfaces to them. So actually, I'll leave that on, why not? Uh, let's look at the other one, like the application control. Same thing, slide button and enabled. Here's the applications and some of the rules, and of course, then the reports. Now. Web filtering versus application control. This is where the magic is. And what this allows you to do is you can flag, tar pit, or block each of these applications. So we can go through here and go, all right, we want to get rid of or remove this and take and apply a policy to someone and go, all right, we want to block social media, we want to block gaming. We just want to go no more 4chan at my house. So we just do this. You can either tar pit it or block. And the difference between tar pit and blocking is explained by the way their documentation at wiki.untangle.com is very thorough and nice. Generally, you want tar pit applications that are hard to block, may attempt circumvent blocking. Block will reset TCP connection so the client knows immediately the session has been reset. Tarpit will acknowledge the receipt of data, but not send the data so it's silently dropped. For blocking web applications in a browser, block is usually better as, as Tarpit will cause the browser to hang as it waits for data, which can cause issues for the user. So when you block it, it just lets them know right away it's blocked. It drops the connection. It's using a TCP drop, so it's like immediate. They go, well, that connection's broken. I can't get to whatever that person is now blocked from. Now, this is just nice, and this is the thing that a lot of people are looking for with all the different free firewalls that's really hard to do that 
because of these feeds. These feeds are constantly updated in order to assess this. This is the secret sauce, if you will, it's not really secret, it's a lot of hard work putting these together and understanding that how you can turn it into one click. Because 4chan doesn't represent just a single website, there's a lot of pieces, there's a lot of components behind there, so blocking it's not as simple as just, we put in a DNS entry and it's blocked. You can do that, but then you always find people who are getting around it and that's where the problems start to come in is people get around you and you're like, well, why can't I uh, do this. It's also a game even with the folks at Untangle or any other web filtering company. It is a constant battle, a cat and mouse game of people figuring out a way to get around your firewall and this is just a layer of you're trying it. At least you put the effort in. Um, I'm not a big fan of web blocking. We do no web filtering here at my office, uh, but it's one of those things that a lot of people do look for. And generally speaking, the average user is pretty well blocked by these things. The advanced user that figures out how to get around uh, VPNs with different SSL tools, they're going to still get around the blocking, by the way. Just making sure it's this is not the end-all solution that makes your web perfectly safe to use. Now, the web filter works much the same way, but it's specifically just for the website, so it's more the blunt object, and it's got the uh, site lookup so you can see where it falls on the list, block sites, past sites, past client rules, advanced. So it's the same thing but a little bit more blunt application is at the application level and it's using their heuristic system to understand what those applications are to categorize them. Web filtering is kind of like it sounds, just filtering general websites together. So it's it's a cool used in combination in tandem. Um, it works really well. Now, a few other things that are in here, and I like this is part of the free version. The IPsec VPN is part of the paid version of there, but the free version comes with OpenVPN and Tunnel VPN. And Tunnel VPN, is something a lot of people have asked about and they've made it really easy to do here inside of Untangle. Just like it says here top, Tunnel VPN provides connectivity through encrypted tunnels to remote VPN and services. So we're going to go ahead and look at tunnels. We're going to click add tunnel select provider. Now they support customization so you can use specific different uh, companies, but they have built in on NordVPN and ExpressVPN and private internet access. So a couple popular VPN providers, they just let you log in uh, and then tunnel your entire network through this. That's pretty awesome, the fact that they built this in and made it very turnkey for a lot of people. Um, I've done videos on this of how to do this in other firewalls and it's a, not a lot, but it's still some setup and steps and things you have to go through, and it's why my video is a little bit longer on it, because I get very detailed on how this works, and I like doing it in a very controlled way, um, but it's nice that they have an auto magic way that you just log in with your username and password for um, your open VPN or private internet access file, and away you go. And then to go a step further, this is, uh, sometimes people have a challenge with this, it's policy routing. And what policy routing does, and they have this built in, is you can take a condition and force it through either route normally or available only through the tunnel. So now you can start creating all the rules right in here to say, all right, I want, and they have a couple example ones that maybe you want to do, uh, route all tagged with BitTorrent usage over tunnel because you want your BitTorrent usage to go through one of the VPN providers such as PIA, and then you want your other internet to just go through your standard provider because as some people have noted already who have done full tunneling of their entire network, uh, you start having problems with a lot of sites like Netflix and a lot of places block you from coming in from a VPN. So if they see that you're operating out of a VPN, they may block you and some sites do that uh, for reasons. and. This way you can still have things like maybe your Chromecast connecting directly to Google and working the way you want, but then your BitTorrent usage going out over a VPN or any other maybe just single computer. So you can create a uh, policy to route just one computer on your network over the VPN and the rest there. This is, like I said, really nice that this is a turnkey feature. And by the way, anytime you change something, it's really small down at the bottom is if you're looking for the save button, which I did, that's the only, not complaint, but at least challenge I had when I first got the firewall going, he's asking me to save things, but I can't figure out where to save them. It's uh, down here in the bottom right-hand corner, everywhere. And anything you change, you want to save. So our unsaved changes will be lost. You want to continue? We'll just go ahead and say yes, it takes us out of there. Um, for those of you looking for 
that more robust level of filtering, this does have an SSL inspector. And if you're not familiar with what an SSL inspector is, it means you have to add to the trust certificate in order to make this trust your computer. So we're actually gonna go over here, SSL inspector, so they have a page where they talk about it in detail of how to install the cert. You just go HTTP, the IP address of your uh, Untangle internal firewall slash cert, and then we're gonna pull up what it looks like. So this is a Windows 10 virtual machine I have set up uh, behind an Untangle VPN. I'm sorry, an Untangle firewall in my virtual machine, the one, one I actually showed you at the beginning here. Um, the thing about this is, Running it like this with the SSL inspector turned on didn't really impress me um, because one of the problems you run into right away is what browser does everyone want to use? Google Chrome. Well, Google Chrome has certificate pinning in it for the Google sites. So here we are at SSL Labs, and you can see that, hey, cool, I've got all these things installed, and I can pass an SSL cert, and an SSL cert's fine here. I get a privacy error on Google. And this is just, I want to give a heads up on this. They're aware of the problem, and it's right here at the bottom. SSL Inspector does not seem to be working with Google Chrome. Why? New Chrome versions use uh, protocol quick to communicate with Google, adding firewall rule, filter rule to block 443 quick, force changes use HTTPS. Also, the certificate error. So the two problems here is the quick protocol and that. And um, I don't know, this is actually, in. Let's dig a little deeper, not to get too far off topic. Let's talk about this real quick. A quick guide to quick over on the Cisco blog. And I brought up Cisco because people know them as the big commercial firewall company with filtering. They have a problem with the quick protocol as well. And this is a uh, quick protocol. I'll maybe do a video on it soon. They just got ratified. So the answer a lot of these companies have is to block it so you can filter better. But on the other side of it is becoming a standard. And all these companies that do any type of filtering are having a really hard time with it. So it's not an untangle specific problem. It is a problem with this protocol because it's harder to see into. The second part is the pinning part of the certificates is a Google thing because so we can't open google.com here in after installing the trusted cert because the SSL inspector is intercepting it and Google doesn't like being intercepted. But when you use Microsoft Edge, ooh, the horror of using Edge, you notice that Google has no problem with it because Google specifically, because they write the Chrome browser, they have extra certificates in the Chrome browser that double check and don't like anything in between. There's some workarounds. I haven't dug into them a lot, but I just want to make sure people who may want to try this and want to go full-blown filtering where they put a certificate on each device so that allows visibility into the encrypted tunnels so Untangle can do a higher level of filtering and get really specific reports on this. That is going to be a problem for you uh, if they're using the Chrome browser. I believe it works fine with Firefox, and it does work with Edge. Um, so just want to bring those up real quick. Close off. So outside of that, though, it works fine. If you do turn on the SSL, like I said, I wanted to make sure I tested it. Now let's go back over to the demo we have. Oh, and kind of related, if you wonder why there's an OpenVPN here, the OpenVPN installer is the same as I've seen on some of the other firewalls. It's the standard OpenVPN GUI, so you can VPN in uh, when you're setting up the VPN. So let's go back over and close this. And I don't have the SSL inspector turned on at my house. That's why I showed you the demo that I have here. And the reason why is I'm not going to go put certificates on all the devices in my house. Um, I don't like that. That's not something I recommend. It's something we do only in as needed in business use cases, but certainly I don't recommend it for home, but you can do it. It's an option. I'll quickly cover the OpenVPN setup. Once again, it's very turnkey. Everything so far about this firewall was very easy to do. No problem. Just enable it go to the server, um, set your address space, add a user, add clients. It's got its own uh, local directory of users, or this does support Active Directory integration. And it's nice having these things out of the box. So if you're deploying this in your office and you go, hey, I just have an Active Directory server and I want to apply, Untangle's an easy solution because they have that integration on there. So that I've tested the VPN. It works perfectly fine. No gotchas, no long config. Matter of fact, uh, one of the easiest ones I've set up in quite a while, you just go here, and nothing special needed, and you download the OpenVPN client. And of course, they got reporting on the VPN. We'll get to reporting last. Now, a few of these other things, and like I said, uh, WAN failover, WAN balancer, you literally just go ahead and add a second WAN port and 
test it and it works. We did test this and we didn't have any problems with uh, setting up failover. We demoed that. They, they, all these things we've tried so far with it were very easy, obvious, just to go into. Now let's look at the config. The config is neat. Uh, back to simplicity, here's all the interfaces that are on the box we're using at my house. External, internal, remap interfaces. So we can simply remap all of them. And you ask, well, how do you know if an interface is WAN or LAN? And in other firewalls, you just have to choose whether or not it's a gateway. In this one, you just say by address, check the box is WAN. It's a static, a DHCP, or a PPOE. That's it. Done. Really, really straightforward. Um, and if you want to rename these interfaces, uh, it just names them Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta. So let's go over here. Interface WAN2. There we go. We've now changed the name. It's really, my overall, like, this was pretty uh, easy to do. And I got to admit, for doing all this in a web browser, it's actually, uh, it's, it's nice. And I'm going to move my head out of the way here, move it over here. But you get uh, interface statistics, drop errors for internal, external. So some of these things are still easy enough to do. Uh, you can see different ARP entries and addresses of all the devices on my network. Host name can be changed here. Uh, service ports, forwarding rules, which I forward my SSH server from home, works fine. Uh, NAT rules, bypass rules, you can, all your standard things you need. They have a few troubleshooting tools in here as well. Ping test, DNS test, connection test, trace route, uh, download, and packet test. So uh, if I want to see how fast I can download something, they have a couple options here. So we're going to go a 5 meg test from CacheFly. Cool. Looks like my internet connection is working reasonably fast at home. These are, like I said, nice features you can jump into and uh, take a look at them. You can also go into some advanced, you know, uh, enable the SIP NAT helper and a few other things on there. So if you're having some uh, trouble figuring these things out, you can turn on things like NetFlow and dig into it a little bit further. I haven't played with all the different tools on there. And for those of you wondering, it does support um, by default uh, fair queuing, FQ Coddle, which is a pretty hands-off, uh, easy to use QoS interface. And once again, it's got full traffic shaping abilities. And for the paid version, We'll go back over to apps. You do have the bandwidth management so you can get more in depth and create priorities, which they have a wizard that makes this really easy to do. So you just run the bandwidth control wizard and away you go. Um, administration, multiple users, uh, system information, auto upgrades. It asks you if you want to turn them on. Yes, you can. Uh, it'll just automatically update the firewall. I'm sh uh, automatic upgrade schedule, you check when you want it to do and what time you want it to do if you want this, or don't upgrade automatically because you want to do it all manually. If you have a busy corporate environment that's operating at 24-7, maybe you don't want it to upgrade automatically. Uh, email and event options and an about page. Now let's get into the reports because this is something I thought they did a nice job on. So since today, uh, this week, so let's, let's start digging into Tom's reports. Where has Tom's people been going. So let's look at the web usage. You can filter these. I filtered it for this week. I can add a condition to only find my computer. Um, but yeah, this is this is nice. They have just reports, stack down reports, stack down reports. I don't have any block sites. I guess there's nothing in there, so they find something else. Um, device reports to device additions to the network. I added two Chromecasts yesterday, so I can right away find that I added those. This is what time I added them. So kind of neat, device updates. So when devices were uh, taken on and off, it's from people coming over my house and connecting their phones to my network. Uh, you can run failover reports, nothing to report there. Uh, Open VPN summary, I don't, uh, so I have, yeah, I don't have any in the last week that I've done any testing with the VPN. Tunnel VPN, everything is a same commonality of how these reports on there, application controls, top applications by session. So we can dig into what was pulling data across uh, top applications by size. Let's see. SSL was 25 gigabytes and Quick was 20 gigabytes. So that protocol, which I don't have blocked, is obviously a big part of the internet. So here uh, we see Netflix was 1.5 uh, gigabytes of the data. I think Netflix is probably filtered somewhere in here and maybe it can't see it. This is, again, one of those tricky things. 
uh, BitTor stuff that's going on on my network. So that was when we say flagged applications. Ah, yeah, I do flag it uh, in the options in this re flagging. It creates a report for us flagging it. So kind of neat. Uh, Tom Lord's PC, that's my gaming computer, so we can see that. Like I said, they've got a lot of details in here. Um, the fish blocker I wasn't using, and I didn't, like I said, I didn't think I really filtered too many websites. So I can see who's pulling all the web data, uh, whoever .198 is. And there's ways you can go through and name and DHCP server and all that. So I just want to give her this overview of it as a firewall. Maybe I'll do some more in-depth videos on specific things. It's extensive, but the good news is their documentation is extensive. It's a commercial product, so you get commercial support with the paid licenses on it. Um, they're, like I said, their stale staff, when I talk to them, are great. My overall impressions of this after only using it for a couple of weeks was really positive. Like I said, we're going to become a reseller because we've seen these out in the field, um, and they've always seemed to work really well. So this is going to be just another solution. We're not getting rid of every other firewall we've ever talked about. We're not a company that focuses on a single vertical, single product. We only deploy one thing for clients. We have deploy things that fit solutions based on their use cases. So uh, Untangle is just another tool in our toolkit of things we're going to be app offering uh, to our clients, and it seems to be a really solid product. And when I've compared it to some of the other ones out there, 48, Meraki, Sophos, um, just the fact that I can't even get a price for some of those other companies without digging into it. Um, I haven't had a lot of experience with Sophos. I will say my experience with 48 uh, for clients using it has been less than great. Um, but my experience with Untangle from using it and from talking to my tech friends has been absolutely smooth and wonderful. And you can see almost how magical this whole system is and how it works uh, pretty out of the box and turnkey. And I didn't need to reference even their support documentation much to just to get it up and going and set up. So go ahead, 14-day free trial if you want to try it. Um, there's no offer codes. I have no affiliation with this uh, company. We're offering it as a solution to our clients. So you may buy it as us installing a solution, but you can just go to Untangle's website and click buy and download it yourself. There's not any affiliate links with this. This is not sponsored uh, by Untangle. This is just me sharing my enthusiasm for it. And thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.